The landscape of medical device manufacturing in South Africa shows that Gauteng is home to about 60 out of the 136 manufacturers. Additionally, statistics indicate that around two-thirds of these manufacturers are ready to engage in exports, which is promising for the trade market across Africa. Good day to you. Welcome to this episode of I on OR Tambo SEZ, where we will be focusing on medical and pharmaceutical manufacturing sectors. I'm Zanella Morrison with you for this program and we are expected to see a growth in domestic production. So how can South Africa's richest province be part of this economic activity? Before we delve deeper into the topic, let's take a look at this. According to estimates from the World Economic Forum, Africa's annual demand for packaged medicines is approximately 18 billion US dollars with local production accounting for 36% of this figure. Projections for South Africa's medical device exports in 2024 suggest they will exceed 130 million US dollars. While South Africa continues to be the largest pharmaceutical market in Sub-Saharan Africa, there is an anticipated increase in the demand for prescription generic drugs. However, this growth may be constrained by prevailing economic challenges. The rising interest in establishing a robust pharmaceutical and biotech production hub within the country presents significant opportunities to address local manufacturing gaps for medical devices and medicines through public-private partnerships. Manufacturing of pharmaceuticals and medical equipment domestically can boost the local economy and is good for integration into African trade networks. Furthermore, the development of a medical cluster near Africa's busiest airport could significantly accelerate economic progress in the sector. Welcome back. Let's meet our guests who will help to unpack this particular sector. Joining us is Stavros Nikolaou, the chairperson and chairman of Pharmisa, which is the pharmaceuticals made in South Africa. And I've got Stienica Jensma, the CEO of Industrial Zones Program at the IDC, as well as Simone Rudolf Short, chairperson of the Medical Devices Manufacturing Association of South Africa. Let's kick off with you, Stavros. Now, the status of the pharma industry in South Africa and what we need to be doing to enhance production and regulation and other issues that the sector faces. How is Famisa looking at the big challenge? Firstly, thanks very much uh, for having me on and uh, good afternoon to all the viewers. The easiest way to respond to you is perhaps to cite some, some statistics that are rather alarming. So let me kick off by saying that South Africa is one of the most disproportionate disease burdens of, of any country in the world. Uh, uh, we harbor, for example, 14% of the world's HIV infected population, a rising tide of non-communicable diseases, diabetes and others. And what is deeply concerning is that we continue to import most of our medicines. Uh, what we, one would think with such a disproportionate disease burden, we would be coming, uh, we would be less dependent on, on imports and be producing more of what we consume domestically. Uh, regrettably, that's not the, that's not the case. Um, what do we need to do? Um, a long conversation, but very simply, uh, two points I want to make. The first is charity starts at home always and we need to align this sector with the Public Procurement Act. It was an act signed into law about six weeks ago by the president. Uh, having a, a localization, a local procurement will be a tremendous stimulus or shot in the arm for the sector. Uh, but we need to stop debating these things and we need to start implementing them. I think that's the first thing. The second thing is, we do need to develop a more export orientated strategy. Um, special economic zones, RDZs, industrial development zones, etc., are a very critical component of that. And I'm sure that's what you're going to be unpacking shortly. And then lastly, we require regulatory reform in order to make this industry a lot more investor friendly, but also 
uh, export orientated. They, you know, exports give you economies of scale, and that's what makes manufacturers succeed. And I think the question, you know, at the end of all of this is, have we made progress over the years? Because I'm wondering how long these conversations have been taking place and if we are seeing the reforms that we need. But we'll get back to that. And, and maybe, Simone, I need to jump to you so that you can even give us an even b bigger view of some of the elements that I think Stavros has spoken about that are relevant to you as well. Thank you for inviting me today. And Stavros is very correct in what he's saying about the burden of disease and the 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 matter around regulation. And you must remember that medical devices are adjunct to any medicine. Um, in many cases, you cannot take the medicine without having a medical device in which to provide for that, uh, that, that medicine. And for us um, as local manufacturers, and I myself am a local manufacturer of medical devices, the advancement of quality management systems and technical requirements in the regulatory sector is becoming quite overwhelming for small business and manufacturers. And this is something else that we need to consider that we're no longer making the plaster of Paris for broken arms and legs anymore. We're now doing um, implants like your plates and your nuts and your bolts that are then that get you through um, back to work much quicker than we did in the past. So the whole environment in the medical device sector from a technology point of view has advanced. And in Africa in general, we are have infantile regulatory um, experience. And this is also something that we need to consider moving forward. Sure. Uh, yeah, it's it's it seems like a, a big task to to solve. Um, but again, we'll unpack a little bit later. Stenica, if you could get ready for me to talk from an IDC perspective, especially looking at the program, um, if you could get ready to let us know how programs like this enhance um, exactly what Simone was talking about, not only production, but production of the latest uh, um, technologies that solve for medical requirements. Thanks, Anela, and um, good afternoon to everyone. Uh, good afternoon, especially to the viewers. We, we are working uh, with special economic zones, and special economic zones play a pivotal role in ensuring that manufacturing happens. What we do is we try and ensure that the right infrastructure is in place, the right funding is put in place, and the industrial zones program in particular was established and based at the IDC so that we can marry both the infrastructure needs as well as the funding needs for the various um, manufacturers that, that we have in the country. Now, pharmaceuticals um, are dynamic. You know, uh, they're, they're changes. The right infrastructure needs to be in place with the right regulatory environment. And to have these in a special economic zone is very critical. At the moment, you'll see we have Stavros here who is working with our Kucha Special Economic Zone and the Oar Tambo uh, Special Economic Zone is in the process of establishing uh, a precinct that is also going to focus on, on pharmaceutical business. So technology-wise, um, you need to have the right technology in place um, if you are going to develop in the sector. Thank you. Mm, thank you so much. I think we'll come back uh, to you on an expansion of exactly what are we seeing being focused on by the likes of IDC. Stavros, you know, I, I, I sort of feel the weight of the challenge. So as you're sitting in this particular role, you know, as the chairman and the, and, and the chairperson of FAMISA, do you think we're pulling the right levers? And what are the right levers that can make the biggest change for the sector? You know, the, the levers exist in part, um, and, and I think it's a, it's, it's a sort of a, a commonly held view um, about many sectors in our country. I, I don't think we've got an issue with policies or uh, enabling interventions. It's, it's our ability to implement and execute. Uh, so let me use again the example of the Public Procurement Act. For, which for me is, is the most important instrument we have right now to drive localization, expand manufacturing and, and grow export orientation. Now, the, this, is a, this is an act which predecessor was the public, uh, the preferential 
Public Procurement Framework Act, the Triple PFA as it's known. So that was its predecessor. It was put into place in 1996 and under Trevor Manuel's term and regrettably was not properly implemented at a localization level some 25 years on. And eventually the regulations to that act were taken to court. And this is why we now find ourselves with a new uh, public procurement act. And again, I think Stavros, you're helping to, to, in a way, talk to the strategic leadership that's required on where we do this and how we do it. And Simone, this is about saying we've got a number of, in every sector, startups waiting to get into the, in, into the industry and they need their products bought uh, to a degree where they achieve scale so their prices are correct and therefore you know, the public's money is being spent correctly. Do you see the challenge that I'm posing um, you know, on the back of what Stavros has laid out on the on the table for us yeah very much so because with whether it's medicine for medical devices the the public procurement framework um would impact on both sectors except we also need to remember that the medical device sector is very different to medicines and one of the biggest mistakes that was made was when we had the revision to the medicines act in 2017 where they inputted devices into the current um, old legislation. And this is a, has a severe impact on the supply chain for medical devices, because unlike medicines, our device sector also sits within the retail market. You must remember, we've got such a diversity and complexity of products that the legislation that we've got right now, even with the procurement um, disadvantages that we've got, on the public side um, are having a negative impact. When I, when I refer back to you, Stienica, what do you see the focus being, at least of the SEZs, when it comes to contributing uh, to the sector, be it medical devices or pharmaceuticals? So the SEZs, you know, play a very critical role in ensuring that there's competitiveness and that our pharmaceutical industry and our medical devices industry are able to compete globally, you know. Um, so the issue of competitiveness is, is what the, the DTIC has taken a, a critical note of and various elements are put into place to address that and ensure that our entrepreneurs actually compete and compete fairly. Well, it's good that we're part of, I think, the initiative with uh, Oratambo SEZ to promote the pharma and medical manufacturing cluster in South Africa. Thank you so much to my guests. It's all we have time for to touch on this very broad and extremely complex matter, but always great to gain new insights. And you're joining me today. Uh, I'll see you next time at the next Eye on Oratambo SEZ episode. It's goodbye for now.